Welcome back to Boiler House Garage. This video will be taking a look at my new Octane tester that I'd recently imported from Russia called the Octis 2. It got stuck in Belarus for about a month but thankfully the seller was helpful and it did eventually find its way through customs and arrive with me with no import fee to pay unless of course it was already included in its £220 price which is considerably cheaper than any Octane tested equipment I had already looked uh, to buy for the channel. I'm looking to test all the ethanol free petrols that we've previously featured on here to see if they truly meet their advertised octane numbers which are usually 97 to 99 ron in the UK but we uh, could also see how much 95 ron petrol loses when we extract the ethanol from it to see if it could still be used directly or if you need to add an octane booster. This tester is only designed to test pure petrol or gasoline, not ethanol blends, as technically speaking E10 is petrol mixed with alcohol. Any Americans who may remember the 70s fuel shortages should remember gasohol, uh, at least in certain states, which was an earlier use of adding corn ethanol to petrol, usually 10% but sometimes up to 15 Did this affect their vehicles, which would now be considered classics today? Yes it did, however in the 70s having to replace a fuel pump or have carburetor repairs was a more accepted part of motoring. Heck, even in the 90s we still regularly replaced exhaust, shock absorbers, a lot of pipework and wiring on cars would fail during only a few years of ownership. It's amazing how quickly we've forgotten and now expect car components to last at least a decade and well over 100,000 miles. As for our now classic 70s cars, getting hold of spares is much more difficult as we've previously highlighted. The occasional weekend use of a classic car will exacerbate the problems inherent in ethanol as a motor fuel. Anyway, enough of me waffling, let's take a closer look at the tester and get it fired up. I'm curious if my phone's screen recorder works uh, at the same time as Google Translate. Oh it does, what have we got then? Verification and journal behind the wheel, express analysis qualities petrol. Digital technologies fireproof for domestic use. Indicator of the octane number for gasoline vehicles. More of the same there. It's the two years or 24 month warranty. Next to the flag I assume is made in Russia. Now inside the box it says thank you for your purchase. It's obviously going to be a bit of a word salad on the manual. It does read completely different as you move the lens over the sentences, but it's still very impressive. I did download an English translation of the instructions, so I have a good idea on how to use it. The unit itself is quite simple in its manufacture, and it's designed to read octane as you dispense it through the pump and into your filler neck, or have it submerged in petrol. The box contains some paper strips which are used to clean oily deposits off the sensors, which I won't need for a while. There are a couple of rubber bungs, I guess to go over the end of its nozzle. A couple of replacement seals, ironically this can't test ethanol blends but it still might wear out the rubber seals. Batteries are included, Ugh, I must apologise for my filthy hands and dirty nails as I've just been working on the Cavalier. But yes, we've got a pair of Russian AA batteries. There's a simple display, on off button and a small mode button. If we take a look inside, we can see the sensors that I assume are dielectric capacitors that determine octane through relative permittivity, but the less I talk about that, the better, at least for your sake. There's no easy access to insert the batteries. It looks like you have to undo several screws, and there's no picture to indicate otherwise on the back. So there's six small bolts to undo, four of which the nuts will drop out too to access the battery box and the metal back plate just lifts off. We can see some more of the electrical components like this as well. Those spare seals replace this one but that's only to hold a fuel pump nozzle which we won't be using. Let's switch her on. PYC when it's doing this you can apparently change modes to adjust for temperatures and to switch between normal octane or AKI uh, and research octane number. Well zero octane for air is a good sign, I just think it reads over and over so we'll switch it off and try it on some petrol. I've got a gallon of ethanol free high octane petrol to top up the Cavalier. She started up after a good two or maybe even three months of being left, although the electrics seem a bit temperamental in this damp weather. 
I'm hoping to take on an Opal Manta project car soon, so let me know if anybody would be interested in buying the Cavalier, as sadly I don't have room for the two. Anyway, back to the fuel test. These cylinders are ideal for this due to their cylindrical design of the tester, although it would help if I actually put enough in, as it has to be fully submerged up to that line on the metal nozzle that the fuel line won't quite reach. That's better. So remember, this is in AKI, the anti-knock index octane like they have on American, Canadian and uh, I think even Brazilian fuel pumps. 93, but the manual says to ignore the first reading and to take the second and third as accurate, but this seems pretty consistent at 93 octane. I'll try a few variations of sampling. In this case it's submerged in just over a gallon, it's reading consistently 93 again. Uh, so we'll try another method. Now I'm not confident this will work, but I'll try pouring petrol through it. Apart from making a mess, I think the seal here means that a steady air-free flow of pressurised petrol needs to be passing the sensor, as I'm just getting a fresh air zero reading. While it's still scanning, let's put it back into the 4 litres of petrol. Yep, 93 again, so it does seem to be reading consistently. So this time I'll show you what happens with E10 petrol. This is a sample of Harvest E10, which we tested to find actually contains 7% ethanol, the highest I've found so far in the south. I'm also doing a mileage or fuel economy comparison test on this currently. So it just gives the highest reading of 110. It's actually meaningless as the ethanol has different dielectric properties than this machine is calibrated for. But in part 3 of this new octane testing series, I'll be taking the ethanol out of this sample and seeing how much octane you lose from doing so. Before then, join me in part 2 where we'll test our first super unleaded sample to see if it is the octane number as advertised. Please subscribe to be notified of these videos as I upload them and also check out my series of ethanol content testing if you haven't already as some of the results of what's really in E5 and E10 labelled fuels might surprise you. Thanks very much for watching.